Hello and welcome to Apply Database 1. In the previous lecture, the entities uh, that need to be tracked in the system were introduced. Entities are considered the nucleus of our database. Those entities can be expressed in relations or what we call tables. Each entity has a set of characteristics or attributes that is associated with it. Some of these attributes can be used as determinants to other attributes in the relation which can be expressed in the form of functional dependencies. Some of these determinants will be elected as candidate keys and uh, one of these candidate keys will be uh, selected or elected as the primary key to open the records for uh, of uh, the database. The primary key is preferred to be numeric. Uh, it has to be unique and it can determine all other attributes within the relation. If none of the existing attributes work as a primary key, we uh, can create what we call a surrogate key to uh, be the primary key. Uh, the key also important in connecting different entities together. The same primary key can be used in a different table as a foreign key to tie entities with each other through relationships. In this session, Data modeling, which is uh, like an entity a relationship diagram, will be introduced. The diagram will confirm the identified entities that we uh, did in the previous session. And uh, of course, we will uh, also uh, confirm the primary keys that we selected for each entity. The mod uh, this module will uh, address ID dependent and other weak entities. It will also discuss the supertype, subtype entities, the strong entity patterns, the ID dependent association patterns, and the multi value uh, or multi valued attribute pattern, in addition to many other patterns. Before the design, before we start the design, we need to create an initial data model. The data model is just a plan or a blueprint. We are trying here to diagram our database, to draw our database. The data model is more generalized and abstract than the database design. We're not in the design yet. We're just drawing the schema for the uh, database to understand the different entities that we are dealing with, their attributes and their relationship. In this conceptual model, you will have the ability to make changes, add or delete, uh, we can convert, you can do whatever you want within the data model. And then after that, we can translate that into a database design and the changes at that point will be harder to uh, be performed. The entity relationship model is a set of uh, graphical symbols that can be used to create conceptual schemas or diagram. To create the model, uh, we need to understand the entities involved and their relationships with each other. For example, student entity will be taking courses from courses entity. So we have two entities like student entity and the courses entity and one instance from the student entity from that table will be taking courses from the courses entity. The original entity relationship model was introduced by Peter Chen in 1976 and this is how all this relationship started where we started looking at the database differently and we started looking at uh, those databases as entities related to each other and uh, how uh, we can um, uh, start you know establishing this uh, this uh, relationship between those entities and make sure that the information uh, are consistent then it was extended to include additional notations and now in 1990 James Martin introduced the cross foot notation to express the many relationship and we'll talk about the uh, one to many and many to many relationship in a few. In 1993 the National Institute of uh, Standards and Technology developed a national standard 
to express the entity relationship model and was named IDEF1X. Actually, this is one of the models that was used in the Department of Defense um, um, in, uh, you know, widely in every uh, database they used. In the late 90s, the object management group organized entities uh, as objects and introduced the concept of dealing with these entities in object-oriented approach through unified modeling language. Now remember that entity is something that you need to track in the system. So if you can uh, identify a collection of entities of a given type such as you know a plane, a car, student, employee, customer, order, then this could be called entity class. It's a higher level of an entity. The occurrence of a particular entity of the entity class such as for example if we have the main class as plane and then we have entity class such as Boeing uh, 747 uh, that will be an inst instance from that class and it's called entity instance there are usually many instances of an entity in an entity class this figure represents the customer entity with a list of attributes and you can see below that the entity list of two different instances of a customer the blue diagram is the graphical representation of the entity itself so that this rectangle the blue one is the entity itself and those are instances of this entity in the first in instance uh, we have the uh, customer um, number we have the customer name street address city state zip code contact name and email and again this is the same for this instance the characteristics of an entity is called attributes as we stated before all entity instances of a given entity class have the same attributes but vary in the values of these uh, attributes we can represent the attributes in the data model with uh, ellipses or um, as a new data modeling product with a rectangular form ellipsis representation is not used anymore due to its uh, complexity and uh, unpracticality um, if this is the diagram for one entity imagine if you have like five or six entities and you want them uh, to have a relation with each other how would you do that with elliptical shape or with the ellipsis shape uh, this will be hard to use for that so um, uh, in the assignment do not use this approach at all do not use this approach uh, I want you to use the new um, representation now with the new representation it's rectangular like this uh, so this figure represents attributes of an employee and see how neat and uh, easy to represent uh, using uh, this diagram so this is the diagram that we are going to use for the modeling for modeling the database this is the diagram <coughs> so this is an employee entity with identifier or key employee number and then we have the attributes of employee name phone, email, hiring date, review date. Identifiers are attributes that name or identify entity instances. Basically, it's the primary key of the entity. This is what we uh, talked about in the last session. The primary key can consist of one or more attributes as indicated in uh, previous uh, sessions too. 
more than one attribute key will be called composite identifier or composite key identifiers uh, in data models become key in database design so we will call it in the model when we create the diagram for the model we will call it identifier once we translate that into database design the identifier will be named as key primary key or foreign key entities in the data model will turn into tables we are going to call it entity in the model but once it translates into database design then we are going to call it table this figure shows an example of the different ways that you can display entity attributes in a data model you can display it with all attributes with identifiers only or with no attributes at all so this is um, uh, entity with all attributes this entity with identifier only just the primary key here uh, and this one uh, just the name of the entity but no attributes not including the identifier even entities can be associated with one another in relationships if the associations uh, were among entity classes it will be called relationship classes and if the associations were among entity instances it will be called relationship instances a relationship class can involve two or more entity classes the degree of the relationship is the number of entity classes in the relationship if two entities have a binary relationship uh, it will be of degree two if three entities have a, a ternary relationship it will be a degree of three the figure shows an example uh, or examples of the binary relationship such as the relation between the employee and the skill and another one or another example of the ternary uh, relationship such as client project and uh, architect cardinality is the type of relationship between two entities which can be expressed as number um, we can count that um, uh, there are two types of cardinality maximum and minimum uh, maximum cardinality is the maximum number of entity instances that can participate in a relationship uh, minimum cardinality is the minimum number of entity instances that can or that must participate in um, a relationship so looking at the entity instances we can identify three types of maximum uh, cardinality the one to one one to many and many to many and don't worry we, we are going to go through uh, each one of them and explain it uh, thoroughly uh, this figure shows the three types of maximum cardinality so in the first one in the first figure uh, or uh, first diagram um, uh, we have um, uh, one uh, uh, we have the employee and the badge as entities so each employee will have one badge and one badge only uh, so uh, each badge will be related to an employee uh, so this relation is called one to one one employee one badge one badge must have one employee while the relationship between the employee and the computer which is the one in the middle here the second diagram can be one to many one employee might have many computers desktop laptop you know other uh, computers or devices so we say that one employee can have many one to many relationship in the third diagram uh, we can uh, see that the employee and uh, the skill entities um, they uh, have a relation of many to many uh, the company's employee will have many skills so many employees will have many skills the relationship will be many 
too many. In the one to one, uh, in the one to many relationship, the entity in uh, the one side of the relationship is called the parent entity or just the parent. The entity on the many side of the relationship is called the child entity or just the child. So in this figure you can see that the employee is the parent and the computer is the child. In this case the relationship will be known as has a relationship which means that each entity instance in the employee entity has a relation with another ent entity instance in the computer entity and vice versa. Computer has an assigned employee so it's also it can work the other way around. As, start, uh, as stated in the previous slide minimum cardinality is the minimum number of entity instances that must participate in a relationship. Generally it's referred to as either 0 or 1. If 0 then the uh, participation in the relationship by the entity is optional and no entity instances must participate in the relationship. If 1 then participation in the relationship by the entity is mandatory or required and at least one entity instance must participate in the relationship. When creating the model diagram, optional relationship which is uh, zero will be represented by the oval uh, uh, next to the optional entity and um, uh, a vertical hash mark uh, next to the uh, mandatory or the required uh, relationship. So this is how we do the uh, 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 graphical uh, representation uh, in the model. Looking at the diagrams in this slide you can see that uh, the first diagram an employee must have a badge and we cannot issue a badge without an employee. This means that minimum cardinality relationship is mandatory to mandatory from both sides and that's why we have a vertical hashtag that represents the mandatory relation between these two entities. In the second diagram it's optional for an employee to have a computer and not every computer was assigned to an employee. This means the minimum cardinality relationship between employee and computer is optional to optional. In the diagram it was represented by the oval shape next to each entity and this is the shape here so this is optional to optional. In the third diagram we must have an, uh, a skill for each employee and uh, there are some required skills uh, which are missing and there are no employees who have those skills. Uh, this means optional from the employee side but mandatory from the skill side. In the diagram the employee side was oval while the skill side was a vertical hash mark. In each graphical model, we need to define both maximum cardinalities and minimum cardinalities. So if I ask you to define all relationships uh, with our minimum or maximum, you have to uh, identify and define all uh, 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 relationship between or relationships between those entities. So as seen in this slide, we have the one to many and the mandatory. So we have the one-to-one, -one, mandatory to mandatory, we have the optional to optional, one-to-many, and we have the many-to-many, -many, optional to mandatory. An ID dependent entity is an entity child uh, whose identifier includes the identifier of another entity, parent. For example, apartment is a child entity, while um, um, whose identifier must include the building number. Um, since it must be, it, uh, since it's a must to provide the parent identifier, then the minimum cardinality for the parent is always one or uh, 
in other words required so this is the building this is the apartment the apartment is a child the building is a parent and we can see that um, the building name or building number is um, included in the apartment identifier and that's why we say that the apartment is ID dependent um, uh, entity so this slide shows some of the examples of the ID dependent uh, entities and uh, the graphical representation how we can uh, draw it when uh, we create the model uh, which um, uh, you know again uh, we are going to use one of the assignments will uh, require you to create a model for the database the diagram will include entities attributes maximum cardinality and minimum cardinality all included in this in this example so if you look at the building example like I said we have one building that will have many apartments the apartment must be in a building since the apartment must be in a building so it will be always one from the parent side and here in this case we have it optional from the uh, child side some buildings will not have apartments so from that the child side here that's why we have it optional or zero now try to use the same reasoning with painting and patient to understand how maximum and minimum cardinalities apply to the ID dependent entities make those as your uh, practice uh, to understand how this works if the entity's existence depends on the existence of another entity then it will be considered a weak entity actually all ID dependent entities are considered weak uh, for example apartment is considered a weak entity since apartment cannot exist without a building we will not have apartment just stand alone in the street uh, but we will have an apartment that will be attached to a building um, but there are also uh, non ID dependent weak entities where the identifier of the parent does not appear in the identifier of the weak child entity so it's not always for the ID dependent but sometimes some cases you will have a non ID dependent weak entity and this is an example uh, the car model entity has the manufacturer model as an identifier but an auto uh, which is a weak child entity that cannot exist without the parent but does not have the parent identifier and we use in this case the VIN number to identify the auto so auto here is not ID dependent it's not this is not ID dependent but at the same time it's a weak entity because this uh, VIN number those descriptions uh, those information will not exist without having a, a model uh, or a car uh, in the entity side or in the parent side we can also define a subtype entity which can be a, a special case of a super type entity for example the super type entity student could have undergraduate or graduate subtypes so those are considered as subtypes of the super type student we could have plane and plane is super type and then we could have Boeing or Airbus those are the two sub super or subtypes entities and there are many examples uh, similar examples that we can mention or you will see uh, later on so for the super type contains all common attributes which will uh, um, be inherited to the uh, subtype so uh, the subtypes will contain some of the attributes and then it will contain specific attributes that is related to that subtype only the super type may have a discriminator uh, attribute that uh, uh, indicates the subtype uh, we can start creating a diagram through the ID dependent and uh, super type subtype entities and you can see here we have the patient as a, a parent entity uh, we'll have the exam as an ID dependent entity ex uh, and uh, um, exam cannot exist without uh, 
uh, patient so the patient entity as a super type will have to have a, a subtype um, based here uh, we added a subtype which is uh, sex and uh, for that sex is the uh, discriminator in this case and you can see the uh, subtype entities that came because uh, we used this type of uh, discriminator if subtypes are ex exclusive uh, one supertype re relates to uh, at most one subtype if the uh, subtypes are inclusive one supertype can relate to one or more uh, subtypes let's understand that more I know that this is hard to understand so let's take some example and look at how this works so for example on the left side this side uh, if you can see uh, we have an exclusive uh, subtype uh, so based on the employee code as the discriminator this is the employee code and this is my discriminator an employee could be manager or database admin but cannot be both and that's why we call it exclusive so the ex exclusive it's either or and you cannot ha be both um, and that's why we call it while in the example on the right here you can see that that relation is inclusive which means uh, although we have uh, two super types uh, or subtypes but an, em an employee can be either manager database admin or can be both and uh, the reason that we used um, uh, actually that discriminator in this case as um, uh, allowing uh, us the discriminator that we used is allowing us to um, have uh, both jobs for the same person uh, and it will be fine uh, relationships connecting supertypes and subtypes are called is a relationships do you remember uh, the has has a now we have is a for example a uh, Boeing 747 subtype is a plane uh, super type that's a super type entity so subtype is the Boeing 747 and the super type is the plane uh, entity the identifier of the super type and all of its subtypes must be identical for example when we say that uh, manager uh, the employee ID is what defines the super type so we have an employee employee ID is the identifier or the key in this case uh, how about the manager the manager is also an employee uh, for that if I need to identify them or know information about them I will use their employee ID although they are managers but I'm still using the same identifier that I used for the super type so whatever identifier on the super type can be used on the subtype super type can be used on the subtype if the entity has its um, own identifier and stands alone separate from the other entities then we can consider it as strong entity for example the club member uh, is a strong entity in this case in this diagram and can stand alone separate from other entities and the locker is a strong entity and can stand alone too every company has a department or departments like uh, sales accounting production uh, the department entity is not uh, related to one company it can stand alone with its own identifier can be for uh, any company any place any uh, organization uh, so department is considered as a strong entity and each company can have many departments so the company is a strong entity and the department is considered as strong entity in this case also parts are uh, considered a strong entity and can parts can be uh, standalone uh, so many companies makes many parts which is called many to many strong relationships so we have strong relationship here we have strong relationship with the department so both uh, 
we can see that uh, we can uh, create what we call a many-to-many -many, uh, relationship from the company and the parts uh, where uh, both of them are strong uh, entities. We'll stop on the, these patterns and uh, strong entities and uh, we will continue later about the model. Uh, that will be all for this session. So if you have any questions, uh, please uh, use the proper channels or the channels provided to um, uh, communicate with me. Uh, I will be more than glad to assist you in any of uh, the questions that you have or the concerns that you have. That will be all. Have a great day. Thank you.